I've had this Gigabyte Radeon RX 7800 XT for close to a year now, and in this video, I wanted to give you a review on my experience using it. This is Gigabyte's Gaming OC Edition RX 7800 XT. You can currently get this graphics card for just $490 on Amazon and Newegg, making it one of the more affordable triple fan 7800 XTs currently available. I used this card in a $1,000 gaming PC build I put together at the beginning of 2024, and I paired it with initially an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, and then later with an AMD Ryzen 5 7600 processor. I've benchmarked this graphics card in 17 different games at both 1080p and 1440p resolution, both with the 5600X and the 7600. You can check the results of how this card performed in my 5600X versus 7600 benchmark video, but in this video, I'll go over a handful of the results from some of the more popular games that I tested. But let's first get into this card's base specifications and features. Like all other 7800XTs, Gigabyte's RX 7800XT Gaming OC graphics card features 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It also sports a solid factory overclock with a boost clock of up to 2,565 MHz. The card features Gigabyte's triple fan wind force cooling system, which comes with three 90mm fans that utilize an alternating spinning configuration, seven copper heat pipes, and a large copper plate that makes direct contact with the GPU. It also comes with an RGB lit logo on the edge of the card, a nice looking metal back plate, two display ports, and two HDMI ports. To power this graphics card, Gigabyte recommends using a 700 watt power supply or greater. It also requires dual 8 pin PCIe connections from your power supply. I used XPG's 750 watt core reactor power supply to run this card and have had no problems. This card measures in at 302 millimeters long by 130 millimeters tall by 56 millimeters thick. Thanks to its robust cooling design, the Gaming OC is a pretty big card and it's easily one of the bulkier 7800 XTs available. However, at 302 millimeters long, it isn't excessively long and it is actually one of the shorter triple fan RX 7800 XTs available. So the Gigabyte Gaming OC 7800 XT shouldn't have any problems fitting in most modern standard ATX cases, and there are quite a few micro ATX cases and mini ATX cases that can hold it as well. For performance, again, I've benchmarked this card in a number of games, and I have three dedicated benchmark videos for this card to showcase its performance. But in this video, I'll show you how it performed in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Metro Exodus, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Starfield, both at 1080p and 1440p resolution, and both when paired with an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and Ryzen 5 7600 processor. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p resolution at the Ultra preset, the Gigabyte RX 7800XT Gaming OC was able to average 150 frames per second when paired with the AMD Ryzen 5 7600 and 136 frames per second when paired with the Ryzen 5 5600X. At 1440p resolution at the Ultra preset, the 7800XT averaged 119 frames per second with the 7600 and 112 frames per second with the 5600X. So the 7800 XT really has no problems running Valhalla even at 1440p resolution. In fact, the frame rate was high enough to where you could really take advantage of a high refresh rate 2K display to get as smooth of an in-game experience as possible in this title. In the extremely difficult to run Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, the RX 7800 XT was still able to perform reasonably well. At 1080p resolution at the Ultra preset, the 7800 XT averaged 83 frames per second when paired with the Ryzen 5 7600 and 82 frames per second when paired with the Ryzen 5 5600X. At 1440p resolution, the 7800 XT averaged just over 60 frames per second at the Ultra preset with both the 5600X and 7600, but dropping down to the high preset brought the game closer to 80 frames per second. So even though the 7800 XT is a very powerful GPU, it still isn't strong enough to give 100 plus frames per second even at 1080p resolution and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. The performance is still good enough to enjoy the game though, and if you're chasing a higher frame rate, you can always turn settings down a bit. Baldur's Gate 3 was another game that the 7800 XT handled with ease, averaging over 140 frames per second at the Ultra preset when paired with the Ryzen 5 7600, and right at 130 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. 
At 1440p resolution, the game stayed over 100 frames per second, averaging 129 frames per second at the Ultra preset with the 7600, and nearly 110 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. So chalk Baldur's Gate 3 up as another game that the 7800 XT can easily max out on a 1440p display. The Gigabyte RX 7800 XT Gaming OC handled Cyberpunk 2077 very well at both resolutions as well, and it even ran the game at the ray tracing ultra preset decently enough at 1080p resolution, averaging 77 frames per second when paired with the 7600 and 70 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. At the ultra non ray tracing preset, the 7800 XT averaged 154 frames per second with the 7600 and 142 frames per second with the 5600X. The GPU did struggle a bit trying to run the game at the ultra ray tracing preset at 1440p resolution, averaging 60 frames per second when paired with the 7600 and 57 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. The card did stay well above 100 frames per second at 1440p resolution at the non ray tracing ultra preset though, averaging 116 frames per second when paired with the 7600 and 109 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. So as long as you aren't expecting a 100 plus frame per second experience with ray tracing turned on in Cyberpunk, the 7800 XT handles the game fairly easily. Metro Exodus is another title that is very difficult to run at max settings, and even at 1080p, the RX 7800 XT could barely maintain an average frame rate of 70 frames per second at the extreme preset. The game is still enjoyable to play, averaging around 70 frames per second, but if you're looking for a higher frame rate, you'll need to turn settings down a bit. And by just dropping down to the Ultra preset, the 7800 XT was able to average over 110 frames per second at 1080p resolution. At 1440p resolution, the 7800 XT couldn't average 60 frames per second at the extreme preset. However, it did average around 80 frames per second at the ultra preset and over 100 frames per second on the high preset. So the 7800 XT won't provide the most ideal experience in Metro Exodus at maxed out settings, but considering how difficult the game is to run, it still handled it well enough, especially when turning some settings down. The 7800 XT was able to handle Red Dead Redemption 2 very well. At 1080p resolution, with all of the settings turned to Ultra, the 7800 XT was able to average 137 frames per second when paired with the 7600 and 128 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. And even at 1440p resolution, the 7800 XT was able to deliver over 110 frames per second on average, hitting 114 frames per second with the 7600 and 111 frames per second with the 5600X. Finally, in Starfield, I tested the 7800 XT at both 1080p resolution and 1440p resolution, and with frame gen turned on and frame gen turned off. At 1080p resolution, with frame gen turned off and at the ultra preset, the 7800 XT averaged 89 frames per second with the 7600 and 78 frames per second with the 5600X. Not the greatest frame rate, but still very playable. However, when turning on frame gen, the 7800 XT handled the game incredibly well, averaging 171 frames per second when paired with the 7600 and 149 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. At 1440p resolution, the 7800 XT still ran Starfield well enough, even without frame gen turned on. At the ultra preset with frame gen turned off, the GPU averaged 79 frames per second with the 7600 and 70 frames per second with the 5600X. With frame gen turned on though, at the ultra preset, the 7800 XT averaged 147 frames per second with the 7600 and 133 frames per second when paired with the 5600X. So the 7800 XT can handle Starfield maxed out at 1440p resolution with frame gen off, but if you want to run the game with a very high frame rate, you can do so by utilizing frame gen. For thermals, the hottest this card ever got was a peak of 66 degrees when running Starfield. However, in the majority of the games I tested, the card rarely went much above 60 degrees. And that was using the stock fan profile and not trying to tweak it further to improve the thermals. The noise levels were also acceptable. I have heard others mention that this specific card can have coil whine, but I personally didn't hear any coil whine in all of the testing I conducted on this card. Overall though, the RX 7800 XT is an incredibly strong GPU for 1080p and 1440p gaming. I also haven't tested this card at 4K resolution, but given its 1440p performance, I'd have to imagine that the 7800 XT can handle 4K fairly well if you're willing to use upscaling and also turn down some settings in those more demanding titles. Ultimately though, if you're in the market for a new graphics card and you have around $500 or so to spend, 
and you're looking for something that can deliver nearly ideal performance at 1440p resolution, then the RX 7800 XT is one GPU you'll definitely want to consider. And of the RX 7800 XTs currently available, Gigabyte's Gaming OC Edition card is a very good choice. Right now, there are a lot of good deals to be had on 7800 XT graphics cards though, and other worthy 7800 XTs that would be worth considering as well would be XFX's Quicksilver and Speedster Quick 319 editions, ASRock's Steel Legend edition, and Sapphire's Pure edition, and all of those cards can be had for the same price or even less than the Gigabyte Gaming OC currently comes in at. So you'll definitely want to check out those options as well and weigh your decision based on current prices. But in any case, that does it for this review. If you have any questions on this card, please post them in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.